Everybody ready? That's a good afternoon. I'm Bill Moten. I am the Vice President of Tesco Technologies for the Solutions Development Team. It's a fairly new team. And basically, my job at Tesco is to make sure that we have the complete offer to help our manufacturers and our customers have that complete offer to make wireless work. Um, we can help you design, configure, and order all that you need to make your wireless solutions work. So I'm pleased to introduce Bernard Taliaferro. Uh, Bernard is head of distribution management at Ericsson and is responsible for growing the enterprise business through indirect channels. Bernard has over 25 years of IT experience with more than a decade in wireless with focus on Wi-Fi, mesh, microwave, and fixed broadband wireless solutions. Prior to Ericsson, Bernard held leadership positions in Bel Air Networks, Motorola Wireless Broadband, and Tesco Technologies. Back before I started. Um, Bernard is presenting today on how Ericsson is providing carrier quality end-to-end -end connectivity for the enterprise market. Very appropriate for what we're doing here today. Uh, this is an interesting topic because myself, I've been in the telecom business for many, many years, and I normally think of Ericsson as a provider to the carrier. Well, that's not necessarily true. They do have a great offer uh, directly for the enterprise, but they are bringing that enterprise class equipment to the enterprise, as the, um, the title says. So please welcome Bernard Taliaferro. Thanks, Bill. Can everybody hear me? Good. Okay, thank you. So, um, as Bill mentioned, I am the head of distributor management with Ericsson Region North America. Uh, I've been with Ericsson now for a little over three and a half years, and I come by way of the uh, I come by way of the acquisition of Bel Air Networks. They have the presentation at the end instead of the beginning. So here we go. I'm going to be talking about using carrier quality products for end-to-end -end connectivity in the enterprise. So really quickly, I think I first need to def define what I mean when I say enterprise. So I'm talking about non-carrier or non-service provider markets, healthcare, education, hospitality, retail, uh, venues like stadiums and convention centers and things like that. So I'll be talking about utilizing carrier quality components to develop or to uh, create that end-to-end -end connectivity solution. So I'm just going to jump right into this. So Bill mentioned, uh, and I think you all heard, uh, and if you're aware of who Ericsson is, you're probably familiar with us when it comes to carrier or service provider solutions because that's where we're most well known, well known. So why would you listen to Ericsson when it comes to solutions for the enterprise? Well, I'll touch a little bit on why I think that's, that's uh, important for people to do. So first off, 40% of all mobile communications worldwide travels through Ericsson networks. Uh, Ericsson is the number one provider of microwave solutions worldwide. Uh, very little known fact when it comes to Ericsson. Uh, we know that between now and 2019, there's expected to be a 7x increase in demand for mobile traffic. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is about 50% of all mobile traffic is actually utilized indoors, not outdoors. So this demand or this increase in demand for traffic is really taxing the networks at these resorts and convention facilities, hotels, uh, your office buildings and things like that. So as that increase continues, the, uh, those networks are being crippled. The, the quality of the components that are being used to build those solutions are gonna become more and more important. It's gonna have to be solutions that are resilient, very scalable, solutions that are able to deal with high capacity very, very well, and solutions that will allow you to leverage those assets as you're moving through build, from building to building and things like that. If I'm gonna build a network like that, I'd wanna trust that to an entity that's called on to design, build, and maintain the networks 
of some of the largest revenue generating networks in the world, and that's Ericsson. So my bet would be on Ericsson for a provider of those solutions. So I'll touch a little bit on who Ericsson is. So we're a 148 year old, 118,000 employee, $34 billion corporation based in Stockholm, Sweden. Our US headquarters is in Plano, Texas, just north of Dallas. Uh, and again, we're most well known in the service provider space, but we're also the fifth largest patent holder across US and Europe. We're the fifth largest software company in the world, something I didn't know until I came to Ericsson. Um, we, we hold actually over 33,000 patents and on a yearly basis that uh, turns a considerable amount of uh, revenue to us. But what you'll see in this slide is I'm also showing things that you don't think of when you, when you think about Ericsson. I'm showing switches, I'm showing phones, I'm showing Wi-Fi access points, and I'm also showing uh, microwave radios. So I'm gonna dive a little bit into the enterprise side of this presentation and show you how we fit into that. So the typical corporate communications infrastructure consists of a few things. You're going to have a voice infrastructure, so you're going to have your phone system. You're typically going to have some type of presence aware, unified communications application that's running across your network. You're going to have Wi-Fi access points, indoor and possibly outdoor, uh, to enable client devices to be able to connect to Wi-Fi to ask, access uh, various ad sets and resources on the network. And then if that network spans multiple buildings, you're typically going to have lease lines connecting those buildings. Um, if it's a campus and it may be privately owned fiber, but you're going to have typically fiber or copper connecting those buildings somehow. So that's your typical, uh, those are the typical components that you're going to have. More often than not, if you've got multiple buildings, uh, you're typically going to have Wi-Fi from one manufacturer may be in one building. There may be a different manufacturer's product used in another building. That could be the result of maybe acquisitions or the IT manager in one building having a preference over someone else. But you've got this disjointed network. Uh, you've got phone solutions from various manufacturers that, uh, although all of them allow you to do the basic function of picking up the phone and dialing and calling someone, there's so much more that you can do when you unify that platform completely. Uh, and then there's the uh, connectivity from building to building that we talked about, so typically leased line. So at Ericsson, what we are striving to do is create a more uniform, more collaborative, more efficient and effective infrastructure that allows people to be more productive and also um, allows you to leverage assets over your entire infrastructure. So within the Ericsson vision of this enterprise connectivity, we're looking at a single unified communications platform uh, over an entire organization, allowing you to do uh, extension dialing from building to building. The ability to collaborate and, and know the presence of, of coworkers, whether they're at their desk, the ability to turn that smartphone into an actual extension on that uh, phone system so that you can be a part of the office and communicate whether you're local, regional, national, or global. So no matter where you are with that smart device, you're still part of the corporate infrastructure uh, and it's seamless communication. Uh, the ability to use technologies like microwave to establish connectivity from building to building, be it across campus or across town. Uh, not necessarily replacing fiber, although we can. Uh, maybe it's an alternative or maybe it is a backup solution to give you that peace of mind uh, that if something happens to that lease line connection, you've got a redundant path or something like that. So I want to touch briefly on some of the items or some of the products in our portfolio that bring this solution to bear. Since I come from Bel Air Networks, which was acquired by Ericsson, I'll touch on the Wi-Fi portfolio first. So the Wi-Fi portfolio 
indoor and outdoor product. There are a few things that are consistent across the entire uh, product line. So there are dual radio access points having two, four, and five gigahertz running on all of them. So it's no, there, there are no access points that would just have a single radio. The other thing that I'll mention is every access point has dual filters in them. So we've got filters before and after the amplifier. And what these filters do is they allow us to operate very, very well in environments where you've got DAS networks deployed or very, very close to the antennas from the, uh, from the micro solution. So our access points are almost immune to being interfered with by those solutions and also will not emit any signal that will uh, hinder the performance of those solutions. So it's a very, very ideal platform to use or portfolio to use in environments where uh, technologies like that are being deployed. So really, really quickly, we've got indoor access points, uh, 802.11n as well as 802.11ac. And then we've got a, what I call a hybrid uh, access point portfolio, the 511x. Uh, the X basically signifies that there are multiple variants. Different antenna configurations exist in this portfolio. This product line gets used indoor and outdoor. Think of your stadiums, your convention venues, uh, but also think about your town centers or your citywide deployments. That's the ideal portfolio or product line for that. And then you get to the 100 series, which is our hardened weatherized access point. So this is kind of the, the flagship of the Wi-Fi portfolio. So this is an access point that uh, is deployed topside on Navy destroyers, taking saltwater spray three to six months at, the time, at a time. Uh, it's deployed in Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, which is the north slope of Alaska. Gets a little cold there. Um, it's also deployed in uh, Djibouti, Africa. And it gets a little warm there. And another place I'll point out is that's the access point that's actually on the International Space Station, inside and outside. So it's a very, very rugged, uh, very capable access point, but surprisingly not uh, cost prohibitive. There's a supporting cast that goes along with the uh, Wi-Fi access points. So we've got an optional controller, and I did say optional. It's not a required component in order for our access points to function, uh, for them to communicate to one another or to client devices. The controller brings you some additional functionality, like the ability to flatten very large networks and allow for seamless mobility and seamless roaming. Think about a network covering, say, all of Long Island. Um, as a matter of fact, we've got 18,000 access points covering Long Island, and there's the ability to seamlessly roam throughout the areas where that, those access points are deployed. You could be streaming video, and that connection uh, is maintained versus the need to disconnect, re-authenticate. You know, so the controller allows functionalities like that to take place. Uh, the controller also will manage radio resources. So in high density, high noise floor environments like stadiums and convention centers uh, where you've got you know, thousands of devices uh, competing for access to the resources, the uh, controller manages the way the access points deal with the noise associated with that, channel selection, transmit power, and things like that. Uh, then there's also some supporting characters on the software side. So we've got our Wi-Fi manager, which allows you to manage, monitor, configure, and control the access points uh, no matter where they're located. So you can have a Wi-Fi manager managing networks of access points all over the world from a single central location. They can be subtended behind firewalls. They can be uh, behind routers or across the internet. Uh, Wi-Fi manager has the ability to communicate to them through the internet so you can centrally manage and monitor all of the networks that are in your care. And then lastly, Wi-Fi business analyzer is a trending tool that just gathers the information from Wi-Fi manager and uh, the controller and presents that information in a, in a format that allows you to quickly and easily understand how your network is performing. So next I will talk about the microwave portfolio. So this is the fiber alternative or the 
a redundancy to fiber that allows you to establish connectivity between your buildings very, very cost effectively and quickly. I don't know if any of you have ever had to call and order a leased line. Say maybe you're moving into a new building and you've got to get communication set up and you call and order that lease line and they tell you, okay, great, it'll be ready and delivered in about three months. That's kind of how it goes. It's, it's not a someone show up and flip a switch and turn it on type of a process. So with the uh, microwave portfolio, which is known as the Ericsson Minilink, uh, we've got the ability to provide an alternative to fiber uh, that can be deployed very, very quickly. So the microwave portfolio, very, very quickly, mostly licensed spectrum. So it's secure spectrum that you would own uh, so you don't have to be too worried about the security uh, and the integrity of your data. Um, most of the portfolio is deployed completely outdoors. So the radios and, and components are actually deployed on a pole, on the tower, on the wall, so forth, so on. So the first product, the PT2020, is the 6 to 42 gigahertz spectrum. That's the common carrier license spectrum. Then we've got the PT3060, which is actually an unlicensed 60 gigahertz spectrum, also known as the V-band spectrum. Um, that product there is actually the size of a basketball. So very, very small, um, not uh, a, a hideous thing to look at. Um, next to that, we've got the uh, PT6020, which operates in what's called the E-band spectrum, the 70 to 80 gigahertz spectrum. Very, very high capacity, uh, but using very, very little spectrum. So a full gigabit of throughput in 250 megahertz of spectrum. Our competitors require an entire 1,000 megahertz of spectrum to, deli to deliver that, uh, what we deliver in 250 gig of spectrum. Lastly, it's the Minilink CN, which is what we call a split box solution. Um, so you've got an indoor unit and an outdoor unit. That indoor unit allows you to connect T1s, DS3s, and various interfaces, and then you transport that wirelessly uh, over the radio unit. So again, this is a portfolio of products that would be used as an alternative to fiber or copper. Um, so basically an, an alternative to the lease line or a complement to the lease line solution you know, for redundancy or something like that. The roadmap for the microwave portfolio uh, is pretty exciting to me. And actually, um, some of the products on this roadmap are already uh, available and they're in, they're at our kiosk at the Tesco booth and then they're also in the Ericsson booth. So I'll start up with the 6351, which is the millimeter wave product, the V-band product. Uh, and there's a trend here. We are shrinking the boxes, but increasing the capabilities. So the new 60 gigahertz product is now the size of a softball delivers a full gig of throughput, and all of the electronics are now integrated into the ball. So we've done some, some serious things there. Uh, next on the miniaturizing side is the outdoor unit for the uh, Minilink CN. If you look at the second and the third unit depicted on the uh, presentation, in the previous generation, both of those products were the same size. So we've drastically decrease the size of one, but we've increased the uh, output power. And the last one on this screen that I'll touch on is the 6352, which I also have at the Ericsson kiosk at the Tesco booth. That's our E-band product. The previous slide I mentioned that it was a full gig of throughput and a 250 megahertz of spectrum. We've now moved that product up to a full five gig of throughput. And by the way, I'm talking full duplex. So five gig on the transmit and five gig on the receive simultaneous uh, is what we're capable of doing with this product now. My closest competitor just announced three gig full duplex. Um, they're a little late and a little less capacity than us. Um, so my closest competitor, like I said, just introduced a three gig full duplex product. Uh, so again, five gig there, and then we can actually aggregate multiple radios. Uh, the release of software that's running on it today gives us a full seven gig, full duplex. 
and we'll be able to take that to 10 gig uh, full duplex. So again, the ability to establish connectivity between your buildings and eliminate lease line costs or know that you've got the security of an alternative or a redundant path uh, based on the criticality of your data. So lastly, I'm gonna to touch on our Ericsson LG portfolio. This is our unified communications platform and our networking solutions. So in the unified communications area, we're basically establishing your office, uh, your voice communications. So we've got products to cover really all bases. You've got your, your, your branch office or your remote location uh, with the SBG 1000s. And so this is well suited for a remote location with one person or a branch office up to uh, 15 seats. I think about that construction company that deploys one of those temporary trailers uh, at, a, at a construction site. Ideal product for that. So you've got your phone solution, your auto attendant, you've also got Wi-Fi built into this product and VPN capabilities so you can establish a secure connection back to your, uh, your headquarters. Next there's the EMG 80, which is a small to medium business solution. So it's well suited for up to 60 seats. Uh, and then last, the UCP, which is really for your large office, up to 2,000 seats. So kind of addressing all of the variables or all of the uh, possibilities within the corporate infrastructure. And then lastly, you know, although we deal mainly in wireless, every wireless network eventually comes back to a wire, and there has to be a, a switch port uh, to accommodate them. So we've got layer two and layer three switches, um, 42 port, 24 port, PoE, PoE plus, very, very capable switches, um, but very, very disruptive price-wise. So all of the functionality that you need in the enterprise, um, very little of the fluff that uh, oftentimes allows people to drive the price up. So very, very functional, very, very competitively priced or disruptively priced switches. And then the 5000 series, those are our main distribution frame. Those would go in your main closet. Those are aggregation switches. So 24 and 48 ports of SFP or XFP, uh, multi-gig fiber ports. Uh, very, very disruptive price-wise compared to uh, other switches that are comparable. So now you've got this full suite of products delivered to you from Ericsson that allow you to establish your voice communications, your data communications, you've got your uh, presence awareness with the UC side of the, uh, of the voice portfolio, and then the ability to establish primary or secondary connectivity from building to building, be it your campus or offices that are across town where you want some uh, extra security to know that you've got a second way to communicate to that building. So Ericsson delivers uh, the Wi-Fi portfolio, as I mentioned. Uh, a portfolio that's able to operate in very, very high, high noise floor, high density environments, but also very scalable, be it uh, one access point on up to tens of thousands of access points. The unified communications portfolio, very, very feature rich on all three levels of that portfolio. So be it the small office in the box solution, to the full large office 2,000 seat solution. The features and functionality are consistent across the entire offering. And then the switches, as I mentioned, allowing you to establish uh, or aggregate all of the data into your closets very, very cost effectively. Uh, lastly, the total cost of ownership on our portfolios considerably lower than what I've seen with others. We build quality uh, components and we don't, uh, we, we, we choose not to uh, stress people too much on the annual support side of it because we're building a quality component. I think that was the most diplomatic way for me to say that. 
So I want to thank you guys for giving me some time up here. I could go on and on and on, but my time on this stage is limited, and we have a kiosk in the Tesco booth, so I'd welcome the opportunity to answer any questions now that we may be able to get in, and then we can take it further uh, at the Tesco booth.